So the final question is this. To those critics that say that a preacher should not be living a life of luxury, what is your response to that? They're wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Hallelujah, glory be to God, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another banger from our dear friend and legendary prosperity preacher, Kenneth Copeland. And I am just, I, I am beaming with excitement right now. Uh, we're going to get right into this thing, but first, let's just roll that intro. Oh, whoops, wrong button. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new Carcinoma Excision. My name is Leon Lush, and I am literally lactating with joy that we are currently making eye contact through the internet at this very moment right now. First one to blink loses. Oh, you got me shit. Oh, dude, if you are a friend of the channel, you know that we love prosperity preachers around here. I mean, they are simultaneously some of the worst people in the world, yet just continue to be the gift that keeps on giving in the form of uh, content, at least for me. I've made a few videos previously on this topic. Kablow and Kablam. And uh, I just, I love it. The last one I made was probably my personal favorite. It spawned some of my favorite memes to date, including this one. We propelled, birds propel, eagles don't propel. We said, hookah, 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 hookah. And of course, today's video is about Kenneth Copeland, who you may remember as the long tube filled with demons mm, right. guy. Now, these prosperity preachers have been under criticism for decades based on the fact that they build these multi, multi-million dollar tax-free religious empires and then live the most lavish lifestyles ima imaginable, you know, driving around in $400,000 cars, buying $8 million mansions and flying around the world in private jets. Do you ever use your private jets to go visit your vacation homes, for example? Yes, I do. Ah, yes, that's the life, isn't it? Hopping around from one multi-million dollar vacation home to another on your private jet, all made possible because of donations from hardworking, albeit gullible, taxpayers that think that by donating to you, they're reserving their seat in heaven, and you're doing it all in the name of God, of course. For instance, this breathtaking $6 million mansion owned by Kenneth Copeland, which, by the way, is tax-exempt because he designated it as a ministry parsonage, just a classic cut-and-dry case of tax code abuse through the religious loophole. Listen, I have no problem with wealth or living lavishly. If you've done something great or built something incredible and you want to reap what you've sown, more power to you, but it's when you've built that empire, that wealth, by taking advantage of people with single digit IQs, and then you spin it as doing the Lord's work. Well, then you're just like a real life Disney villain. Anyways, Inside Edition's chief investigative correspondent, Lisa Guerrero, recently rolled up on Kenneth Copeland as he was exiting what looks like an airport hangar to get to a beautiful SUV, and she got him with an impromptu interview, and it was, and it was glorious. How are you, sir? We'd just like to ask you about why you don't want to fly commercial. Why have you said that you won't fly commercial? You said that it's like getting into a tube with a bunch of demons. demons. Why do you think well, that? No, no, listen to me just singing. Of course. Not the people. Look at that face. Oh man, I am dying to know what he's actually thinking as he's trying to formulate his response to this question. Son of a bitch! How many times do I have to answer these poor people questions? Lord God, can you smite this woman in front of me? If I flew commercial, I'd have to stop 65% of what I'm doing. That's really the main. I mean, point to Kenneth Copeland here, he's not wrong. Flying private is way easier. And when you're flying around the country year round, stealing money from idiots. You don't have time to waste sitting around at security check and baggage claim. Time is money, baby. How much money did you pay for Tyler Perry's Gulfstream jet, for example? Well, for example, that's really none of your business, but... Great question, Lisa. Here's an example. That's none of your damn business. Praise the Lord. But... Isn't it the business of your donors? Listen. Oh, Lisa, with the ice-cold rebuttal. You know what? Maybe it's none of my business. What about these poor schlubs that paid for your private jet thinking it was going to secure them a seat in heaven? I paid. <laughs> you kind of caught me off guard here, okay? Certainly. Well... If you'd like to come out here, I'd like to give you a chance to to catch your breath and and have a conversation. We don't want to we don't want to catch you off guard. I love Inside Edition. We don't want to catch you off guard. <laughs> oh my God, Lisa, I love you, but you're not fooling anybody. That is a bold face lie. You rolled up on my man Kenneth like a kamikaze missile as he was hanging halfway out of his luxury SUV, and you're trying to talk about we're not trying to catch him off guard. You hit him up immediately with the long tube filled with demons question. Of course you wanted to catch him off guard. Don't be a liar. I love Inside Edition. 
You got to get this now. Why are you listening to me? My my I'm wife listening. thinks Inside Edition is. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, thank you, Lord. Help me. This, let me let me pray. This thing. Well, let me let me just ask. <laughs> what? You just experienced the full spectrum of human emotions in less than six seconds. Oh yeah. <laughs> now, thank you, Lord. Help me. Let me let me pray. This I love Inside Edition. My wife thinks you guys are. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, heaven help me, Lord. Let me let me just pray here for a second. A lot of people think it's unbecoming for a preacher to live a life of luxury and to fly around in private jets. What's your response to that? Very simple. It takes a lot of money to do what we do. We have brought over a hundred, let's see, this, the latest figures just came out, uh, 122 million people to the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, listen, it's one thing to flex your private jets and your V8 Cadillac Escalades, but I draw the line at flexing how many people you've brought to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, yes, I refuse to fly commercial on long tubes full of demons, but let me remind you that recently I brought, well, the, nu the numbers are still coming out. How many, again, was it? 122 million. I recently brought 122 million demons to the Lord Jesus Christ. I was scheduled for Lagos, Nigeria. That's a long ways. I had a week off, and I was scheduled for Peru. And I prayed about it, and I thought, I'm not missing that dedication in Jerusalem. Whoa, man, jeez, just calm down, all right? Go to Jerusalem. I don't care. Just just chill out. Without the airplane that we have that I bought from Tyler Perry, and I didn't pay anywhere. And Tyler's one of the greatest guys. He made it. He made that airplane so cheap for me, I couldn't help but buy it. You know, I've been saying this for years about Tyler Perry, all right? There are two things that he is really good at, making hilarious movies with all African-American casts and selling Gulfstream jets at a very reasonable price. I couldn't help but buy it. All right, but I want to get to the demons because okay. people are very concerned about you. that comment. Give me a chance here, Inside Edition. Okay. I love your eyes. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> well, that was a Joe Biden moment, wasn't it? I love your eyes. Was he going to smell her hair next? You said that you don't like to fly commercial because you don't want to get into a tube with a bunch of demons. demons. Do you really believe that human beings are demons? No, I do not. And don't you ever say I did. Look at this dude's face right now. He is one small line of cocaine away from jamming that arthritic old man finger into her eyeball and ripping her mandible clean off her face. We wrestle not with flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. And then he snaps out of it and saves it with a smile and a Bible verse. Classic Kenneth. You think that people that fly commercial are demons? You give me a chance to talk, sweetheart. I'll explain this to you. But it's a biblical thing. It's a spiritual thing. It doesn't have anything to do with people. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> people. I love people. Jesus loves people. But people get pushed in alcohol. Do you think that's a good place for a preacher to be and prepare to go preach to a lot of people when somebody in there is dragging some woman down an aisle? It made me so mad to see that on television. I wanted to punch the guy out myself. I can't be doing that while I'm getting ready to preach. Okay, first of all, what airline is pushing people into alcohol? And secondly, do they have flights available in July? Because I am headed to VidCon, and I would love to get pushed into a little bit of alcohol on the way there, surrounded by a couple of demons. In the book of Ephesians, oh, God, I love this. We wrestle not with people, but with principalities and powers, unseen things rulers of the darkness of this world. You see, when you're a prosperity preacher, you have the ultimate interview hack because if the interviewer asks you a question you don't want to answer or don't know how to answer, you just start rattling off a verse from Ephesians and the interviewer will be confused and not really know what to say in response and just move on to the next question. It's brilliant. You are living yes. a life of luxury. Yes, you've am. got great homes, you've got yes, great planes, do. You, you drive in limos. I'm a and very wealthy man. You're a very wealthy man. Yes. Yeah. And some and people I'm would say I'm that, is it, is it appreciated? May, may I add something to that? Uh, I, I, my wealth doesn't come from offerings alone. Seriously, it's only like 96% of it. And I have a lot of natural gas on our property. Didn't know that, did you, babe? Now I do. Yeah, you do. Isn't that wonderful? Well, I guess. It's wonderful for you. 
when... <laughs> so the final question is this. To those critics that say that a preacher should not be living a life of luxury, what is your response to that? They're wrong. You heard the guy. Case closed. It's a misunderstanding of the Bible. You see, I knew it. Here I am thinking that this guy is just an actual devil in human skin taking advantage of people's innate desire to feel like they belong to something greater than themselves and in effect taking all of these people's money and allowing himself to live like a billionaire. But alas, it's just a simple misunderstanding of the Bible. Oh, hallelujah. If you, if you go into the old covenant, do you think the Jewish people believe you should be broke? saying that Jewish people they appreciate well. money more than... Real? No, they believe in wealth. Some right. people would find that offensive. Oh, give me a break. It's not that offensive. Jewish people love money. Calm down. So does everybody else, okay? I'm not talking about some people. I'm talking about the Bible. The blessing of Abraham. Abraham was extremely wealthy, and he had a covenant with God. Not the, it's not the Jewish blessing, it's the Abrahamic blessing. God, I get excited talking about it because I love it. All right, pump the brakes, Kenneth. This conversation is going off the rails. And I started out deep in debt with nothing. Finally, something relatable. So you say that it's biblical and that, that, that there's a foundation in the Bible for this. Let me close it with this. Galatians chapter 3. Oh, here we go again, cherry-picking Bible verses. If you belong to Christ, then are you Abraham's seed oh. and heirs according to his promise. And his oh. promise was great wealth. Well, my, well, now it all makes sense, doesn't it? The Bible also says that it's more difficult for a rich man to get into heaven than it is for a camel to get through the eye of a needle, correct? <laughs> Lisa taking no prisoners right now. She's like, all right, Kenneth, I'll see your Bible verse and I will raise you a rebuttal Bible verse. Boom! But he said, all things are possible with God. And Kenneth gracefully takes Lisa's rebuttal, lobs it up into the air and smashes it back into Lisa's court with yet another Bible verse rebuttal. And... He said, if you study the, the Greek behind that... And as if Kenneth needed another nail in Lisa's coffin, he starts talking about the Greek theology behind the Bible first. Game, set, and match. It's trusting in wealth. When he said that, his disciples said they were astonished out of measure because they were wealthy men. How can anyone be saved? He said, all things are possible. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we call a finisher moment in the world of Bible verse battles. Lisa Guerrero just receiving a devastating fatality from Kenneth Copeland. And all things are possible with God. There's no coming back from that. Both of my grandfathers were preachers. They were both very poor. They lived simple, modest lives. They were extremely offended by men that made money like you do, preaching like you do. What would your response be to people that think that preachers shouldn't live this kind of a lifestyle? You can suck on the fumes from my private jet, you pathetic peasants. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's what my response would be. I don't know about Kenneth. And I understand that. And I love them with all my heart. It's, it's your grandfathers that we're standing on their shoulders. But when you go back to the Bible. We're headed back to the it's Bible, boys. It's full of wealth. And it's full of goodness. And it's full of meanness. It's just full of hell on earth. Those are the demons. For meanness. Again, getting back to the... Okay, thank you. Sir, thank you so much for your time What's today. Your Lisa Guerrero. Lisa, <laughs> God bless. Father, bless Lisa today. Thank you for her grandparents. <laughs> I love Inside Edition. I love the people on it. And it thrills me to get a chance to have my face on Inside Edition. <laughs> Thank you very I love much, you, Reverend. Girl. You have a nice day. Yes, Thank you very much oh. for your patience. <sighs> Amen. Just look at the prayer grasp he has on her hand right there. And then he goes on to pray for Inside Edition and that her peace will be a hit. That is a veteran move right there. This is a man that knows how to manipulate an audience. There's something very unsettling about him. I don't know what you mean. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm not missing hell on earth. I couldn't help but buy it. Don't you ever miss hell on earth. Rulers of the darkness. Yikes. I gotta say, this was an action-packed interview. Thank you, Lisa Guerrero and Kenneth Copeland, for your commitment to my entertainment. Well, there's nothing really to say about these prosperity preachers that I haven't already said in previous videos, so... If you want to leave a comment down below, I love reading through those. If you're part of the Tomato Mafia, you know I appreciate you. You want to take a relationship to the next level, there's a link for merch in the description. If you could do me one little favor before you go, just grab yourself a jet, preferably if you could buy it off of Tyler Perry for a very reasonable price. Make sure you watch the movie Medea on the private jet while you're flying over to Lisa Guerrero's house. Once you land, you want to head to Lisa's house, grasp her hand nice and firmly, and just say a nice prayer for Lisa. And the second you finish up and you say amen, you stand up out of your chair and you hip thrust that motherfucker fucking like button for me. I really appreciate y'all. We'll talk to you later. See you in the next video. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.